Here we are. You know, this is Big M1 right here, M.A. Uno, the people's advocate, rap brown gangster. As you can see behind me, Babylon, and it's all its glory, the empire that it is. You might hear the sirens in the background because Babylon was soon burned. Welcome to my world. This is Big M1. We about to do a crazy confidential. I live real life. I'm way more than a a musician or a rap artist. Some people say rap artists are much more than just a rapper. From Let's Get Free, Dead Prayers, and I have traveled around the world. You know what I mean? Which helped me to add on to my name and become M1 International. We've gone to places like South Africa, Cuba, Brazil, all over Europe, and uh, all around the world, we're dealing with the same thing. The most important thing about rap right now, and the state of rap, is that it represents a whole group of people who are the foundation upon which the whole misery of the world stands. Rap, it has its basis and its roots in straight slavery, you know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm talking about taking it back. Before we came to the US soil, and before we were brought here from African soil. These are the pains that, that rap music, or our state of our, our, our hip hop music is talking about. And, and that's what's helping me say what I'm saying today. That did a lot for the psyche of African people. It made people like me grow up and say, oh hell no, you can't be no panther. You know what they gonna do? Turn off the radio. Turn off that bullshit. We all this, we everything. I ain't just a soldier. I'm also uh, a teacher. I'm not just a teacher, I'm also a graffiti writer. I'm not just a graffiti writer, I'm also a father. I'm not just a father, I'm also a, a wild ass, um, wild for the night ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, at the end of the day, I know all the positions, I know how all of that works so we can all be stronger. And, and we have to be that, we have to cognitively be that, at all at the same time. You gotta be a fool if you're trying to be a rapper and you think that you're not gonna become much more than that. The world requires it. The world requires us to be more than just rapping right now. It requires us to be representatives of our communities respective to where we are and the struggles that we're dealing with. Because if we don't connect it, then they're gonna try to wipe us all out and use rap to do it. And use rap to sell us everything to poison ourselves and kill ourselves with. We gotta make our lanes and make our rules. That's how we our, our reality is gonna is gonna be determined. What's so important and what's very important right now is the people's freedom. You know what I mean? When I say the people's freedom, I mean yours and mine. Because they tapping your phone and they in your house and they looking at you and they locking you down for nothing you didn't do. And they still got our political prisons locked down for for defending our rights to be here today and do what we doing. So that's what I think people got, got twisted. And misconceptions about the game is what matters most. Because what matters most is not no, no jewelry or no material shit at all. What matters most is building a legacy that we can cash in on and make sure our seeds can be in power and in control over their lives in the future. So the, the rate we're going, we're bound to be, we're bound to be fucked up if we hear it at all. You feel me? I like to talk about
about a song on, on my album Confidential. It's called Land, Bread, and Housing. And Land, Bread, and Housing was one of the demands in the 10 point platform of the Black Panther Party. And, and my lyrics, I be like, yo, it's been almost 10 years, almost almost a decade, you can't fade me. I made the money, the money ain't made me. Whatever ain't killed me, made me stronger, man, they can't break me. It took my mama 12 years to break free. Now she's sitting at the head of the dinner table saying the prayer. Nam yo ho renge kyo. Just add these old folk dogs, they know. They tell me life is not a cycle, it's a spiral, so I get higher. But what took the song, I think, to the next level, was um, being able to feature my mother's voice because I, she gave birth to me and also birth to the concept of this album. So that's that's what this is all about. That's what that's what we all about. This big M1 right here, M A U N O. Birth of a nation. Dot T V. Feel me? Gotta get that. Gotta get that dollar. What I gotta get? Time to see you. House to meet you. Let me kill. Marijuana feel. Kick back and chill. In Raleigh, North Carolina, I, um, you know, I, I was, you know, an example of culture. You know what I mean? When you talk about what's moving and shaking the heartbeat of the people, you talking about me and my crew. We were the DJs. We was the niggas who, who would kick a nigga ass, fucking with our little sister. We was the niggas that first started selling the drugs. And after high school, you know, I ain't want to be a crack dealer all my life. You know what I mean? It seemed like the shit, because they popularized it as part of American culture. You know what I mean? Um, the Nino Browns of the world. But realistically, I knew how I knew where that ended up at. You know what I mean? And believe it or not, subsequently, a few years after that, my mom ended up doing, um, you know, a lot of time based on conspiracy to sell cocaine, crack cocaine. Some really important lessons were learned. I ain't want to take that to Tallahassee. I ain't want to sell crack in Tallahassee. I want to become a new person, new lanes and new options. And that's that's how I ended up broke as hell, trying to fake my way through going to college. You know what I'm saying? I was banging off the walls, didn't know what to do with my time. And that's how I was introduced to, to my partner, Stickman. We ran in a circle of young men who, who were aspiring to be warriors for our times. We were informed by what was going on around us more than anything. We weren't informed by books or by the college life or we weren't informed by petty bourgeois ideas. We were informed by working class, and we was work in informed by, um, you know, the things that really changed people's lives, that really provided food, clothes, and shelter, some sort of um, explanation to the bullshit. So we, we wanted to be revolutionary, you know what I mean? We listened to the last poets, and we listened to elders like Sister Hana. I developed the dead prayers mind state. It came out of that union between me and Stick. We was trying to undermine the system. We was trying to influence. The only kind of government that we that we knew and that we saw, the kind of government that 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 put its hands in our lives was the student government. And we and we did our best to undermine the whole campus of Florida AM and change a whole generation of would-be slaves into would-be rebels. And that's how we got dead prayers. That's how their prayers were born. That's how the idea was born to work.